Okay, what is going on everyone? I am back with another video and today I am featuring this watch, which is the Hamilton Crosswind. Um, this, I believe it's pronounced Crosswind. It's actually spelled X-W-I-N-D. So it's technically X-Wind, but I think it, it's a Crosswind only because this is an aviator style watch, as you can totally tell. Uh, there's no uh, no doubt about that uh, because it is an aviator style watch it is pretty large um, in terms of watch um, uh, bezel size or I'm sorry case size uh, this is coming in at about a 45 millimeter uh, case size which is like I said very large um, I'm not talking about like uh, Invicta comical large, but it is large for a watch. Uh, it is also very thick. Uh, I ha didn't take the measurements of this, so I apologize, but I am going to take a wild guess that this is going to be about 15 millimeters, 14 millimeters tall. Um, it is a, a weighty piece, let's put it that way. Um, I have owned this watch since 2016. Um, the start of 2016, I believe, when I looked at the receipt. So I had it for about three years now, and I've had three years worth of uh, experiences with this, uh, rotating it in and out of my uh, everyday uh, wear. And uh, I have to say, my experiences are very favorable. Favorable, excuse me. Uh, this watch means a, a special deal to me, only because I got this uh, uh, as a gift from my wife. Uh, for a promotion I got three years ago, or three years ago, I'm sorry, 2016, more than three years ago. Um, so let's go and talk about this watch a little bit. Um, so if you look at the dial, we'll just start there. The dial is extremely busy. Um, that's probably like the kind of the love it or hate it part of this watch for me. I love the way it is. I love the way it looks. It is an aviation style watch, which means the dial will get a little busy, especially with the chronograph. Um, and also the, uh, the, the slide rule calculator, sorry, calculating, um, uh, slide rule. And if I undo these, uh, pusher, actually not technically pushers, but they're just, um, crowns here. You can tell that, um, that if I turn this one, the outer, well, outer, kind of like the inner the inner outer bezel ring. Sorry, I'm not too sure what that is called, but it, 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 it'll just turn like that, you can tell. And then if I turn the other um, crown, you see the up here in the red, um, see if I can get this focused, that rotates this part. Now, I don't know actually how to use this, obviously. Um, I am not a pilot but I do like the style of this watch. Some of you guys may be laughing at me right now, but, um, and, uh, but I, do, I do really like the look of it, uh, I'm sure, but it is fully functional, that's what I'm getting at, uh, and the outer uh, uh, bezel rotates. Uh, there's no clicking noise, as you can hear, and it's bi-directional. Uh, there's a, there's a um, uh, it locks right here, so it just clicks, okay? Now on the other side, now this movement is put in, I think in reverse, if I remember correctly, because the, obviously on most watches, normally you'd have the uh, crown on this side to adjust it. Um, but if I pull, so if I uh, uh, pull it all the way out, you watch the seconds hand, which is in this uh, sub dial here, it is hackable. So obviously it's, it, it'll stop. And then obviously you can just adjust the time. If I push it into the number one position, I can get the day and then turn it the other way, I'll get the uh, day of the week. Um, and then, uh, you know, once you've got everything adjusted to your liking, you can just screw the crown back down. And it is a signed crown with the uh, H, and it's on all three of these crowns here. Um, there's a chronograph function. Um, if I click it here, that starts the, the chronograph. Um, you got your seconds, you got your um, hours down here, or sorry, <laughs> you got your um, uh, every 10 minutes, every, sorry, every five minutes is down here. Uh, hours are up here in case you run it for longer than that, which I rarely do. Um, stop and then reset. I love, I love, love, love how that uh, uh, needle just snaps back into place whenever you stop it. So if I uh, wait for it uh, to go, a little further and then I hear I stop it and then you watch that uh, second hand 
bam, snaps right back to the 12 mark. Love that. Absolutely love it. Um, that, here's the exhibition case back with some more um, calculations on the back, if you will. The rotor is uh, slightly decorated, um, and it is very beautiful. Let me turn it away here so you can see a little bit more of the movement back here. And let's see here. It is sapphire crystal, which is great because I, being this watch is so tall and so huge, I actually smacked the <laughs> the casing and the and the uh, crystal against many many things. It does leave. Oh, this is a little dirty, but um, but you notice there's no scratching, no nothing. You know, it's a tough tough watch basically. Uh, it is water resistant. Um, and it is just a chunky beast. Look at those giant rectangular pushers on this thing. It's crazy. Uh, but it is a beautiful looking watch. In fact, I just noticed that the, the, the pushers are actually polished, whereas the case is brushed. So oddly enough, I never noticed that before. I didn't know the crown was polished, um, but I didn't know the pushers were polished too. Here's the other side. So we've got the nice polishing on the, on the uh, crown and then the... Um, the rest of the case is brushed and then high polish on the back, on the case back, I should say. This is a 22 mil uh, lug width. Um, and this, oh, I gotta say, this uh, this took a while to break in. If you look, see how thick this uh, leather um, uh, strap is or band is, it is freaking thick. So when I first got this thing and actually, uh, you know, this side worn a little bit more than the other side here, but uh, th this is basically, it was just stiff. Uh, and when I put it on, it would just maintain its, you know, shape. And it was kind of annoying at first, but now that I've worn it for three years, I mean, you can tell this thing is just really soft. It's worn in. It's really nice. Uh, and it has not cracked yet. The leather is absolutely superb. Um, there's a Hamilton logo on there. Hamilton, uh, sorry, name on there. Um, it, you know, handcrafted leather, you know, one thing I really like, uh, you know, I love these, um, uh, I don't know what you would call them, uh, but just like kind of double rivets on here. Um, but what I like is the, uh, the class, you got the Hamilton logo and then when you flip it down, you got an H that is so cool. Or is it going to be like this? Either way, it's basically an H, you know, H for Hamilton. Um, Hamilton, I believe, is part of the Swatch Group, uh, kind of like Tissot. Uh, so it is going to be a quality movement in here, a Swiss movement. Um, but let's see, let's get in on the on the dial here. Black dial, uh, loom on the, the hands, and uh, loom on the seconds. Um, you know, I should probably show you the loom. Hang on just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see there is loom, and it is all the way around. Let's see if I can cover out some more of the light here. Uh, it's still pretty bright, uh, and I mean, the, pretty much the entire uh, hour and minute hands are all uh, loomed up. You got loom dots around the uh, uh, the hour marks, um, and you got a little bit of loom here. If I can move the seconds hand out of the way here, you can see there's a loom on the other uh, uh, indices as well. Um, sorry, this camera is not very good in low light here, but, or I'm just too damn close to it. And you can tell the sweeping uh, seconds hand in this sub dial here also has loom on it. So loom isn't very like copious in terms of the sub dials or the indices, but it is, uh, there's a lot of loom going on on the hour and, um, and minute hands. Uh, let me snap that back. Anyways, so there's a shot of the loom. It's, um, it's pretty bright. It's not as great as some of my Seikos. Uh, you know, Seikos are known for their excellent loom. Uh, but otherwise, it's still very legible once you have it charged up. Okay, so conti to continue on, uh, you can see the day and date window is just very legible. It's at the nine o'clock mark. Um, and I just love the way the aesthetics of this uh, watch uh, is where you got the, the numerals, you got the three sub dials, the day and date on the nine o'clock. Um, and you, know, you got all the calculations and the slide rule and all that. And it makes for a very busy, busy uh, looking dial. But, you know, overall it just works really well. Um, to show you a comparison here, it's kind of a weird comparison, but this is just to show you what it looks like next to like a, a more well-known watch, which is basically your, just your average G-Shock squared watch here, the GW something other. Um, 
and you can tell it is a rather huge chunky watch in fact if i go ahead and grab um here it is uh, my invicta uh pro diver this is the 80 uh, 8926 pro diver this is a 40 millimeter case for the invicta so you can tell it is a huge watch by watch standards it is thick i believe the invicta is about a what is it about a 12 millimeter casing or, or height i mean uh, i'm sorry i don't have the measurements for you guys but yeah it is definitely just massive so to give you a shot of what it looks like on my wrist let me just go ahead and pop this bad boy on if i can do this behind the camera the watch is heavy so it has a tendency to just kind of fly off my wrist if i don't get a good hold on it um and this is a big watch so i'll just temporarily just put it on like this for y'all um so you can tell it dominates my teeny tiny little wrists. My wrists are just under seven inches in uh, diameter um, or, you know, wrist, whatever. Um, so at 45 uh, ish case, it's, uh, you know, exceeding the lugs are, are, are you know, exceeding the, the width of my wrist. Um, but for some reason, I still really like this watch. I mean, you can see how just how tall this thing is. It will catch on your cuff. It will catch on, you know, on your car door. It will catch on pretty much everything that, that you know, you're swinging your arms around. You'll probably just knock somebody out. Uh, it is a huge, chunky watch. And I think that's the reason why I love this watch so much. And it has a lot of presence on my arm. You know, if you're wearing an outfit that's not too busy and you have this on and, you know, with the kind of a, the brown ish uh leather bands on it is it's a nice little statement that you're throwing out there uh i kind of do wish i had slightly larger wrist to maybe you know offset the watch uh better but unfortunately i gotta deal with what i was given naturally okay so here it is uh one more shot of it uh, i'm gonna leave you guys with this parting shot uh got any questions or comments uh please leave it below aside from that take care have a nice day and uh i'll catch you all in the next one